Thank you for the introduction, Steve. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, so tonight I'm going to um, show some images from a couple of trips uh, that I made uh, this uh, year to the Southern Arizona area, um, concretely around uh, Tucson and uh, a portal next to New Mexico. Um, the, the first trip was in the spring. Um, so, so most of the birds were freshly arriving, um, you know, beautiful plumage. Um, and then the second trip was, was in July to catch the second wave of uh, migrants, um, uh, which, um, you know, used the time, the monsoon time to, uh, you know, and the new water and the new uh, rejuvenated desert uh, to, um, to nest, uh, you know, in a, in a second round. Um, so the, the trips were um, with the, in, in tours with uh, Matthew Studebaker. Um, and uh, uh, so he was uh, leading the birds, uh, you know, he's more skilled than, than me with the local birds trying to, to find him by ear. Um, and uh, yeah, that, and um, yeah, there's also a few pictures from a couple of trips that I did uh, like two, uh, 10 years ago uh, with a couple of friends. So I'll, I'll get started. Um, so is it, uh, okay. So, um, here's a mm, kind of a rough location uh, of the places that I'm going to uh, show. Um, bottom left uh, is the Green Valley area, Madeira Canyon, um, and, um, some place where we did set up. Then uh, the Tucson area has, um, some local parks, including, uh, Mount Lemon, where uh, you know people go look for uh, warblers that uh, it, that nest at different elevations, and then the last section will be the area uh, at uh, uh, at the Chiricahua Mountains uh, uh, near Portal, uh, where you can find uh, you know lots of other other species. So um, I'll get started with the, the place called. Uh, the Pond of the Elephant Head. This is a place owned by Dano Grayson. Um, used to have a different owner in the past. Uh, and uh, it's a place where, you know, he, he offers uh, some blinds um, and, um, it, you know, material to tinker with uh, setups. Um, so, you know, there's water, seed, and uh, you just wait for the birds to come, um, you know, and land on your, on your purchase. So, um, so back, um, you know, you know my, one of my first trips, uh, I, uh, we found there uh, this brown cowbird. It was very late. Uh, I kind of liked, liked the, the, the shine on the, on, the, on the bird. You can see uh, lots of colors that are not, not, not usually visible. And also I like that, that red eye. Cactus wren, very uh, conspicuous uh, around there. Um, here we used a, a rock, we propped it up uh, on a, uh, on a box, I think, and uh, and the bird landed there, you know, posing for, for us for a couple of seconds. Then, uh, you know, more pedestrian bird, the morning dove, um, you know, perch on a ocotillo, or no, this is a joy, uh, a skeleton, I think. And the uh, white winged dove, uh, a specialty of, uh, of that area, um, you don't find it here. Uh, also, like the different colors you can find on the neck, uh, you know, on the eye, uh, also perching on a on a rock. A uh, gambles quail, uh, kind of a, they replaced the California quail. Uh, this is a local equivalent there. It's very common, and I uh, also like uh, you know the the plume, the patterns on on it. Um, uh, another nice bird, the uh, Perholoxia. Desert uh, Cardinal, uh, love their their song, their the the red mask, you know. Uh, so and you can see here, you know, we use basically the same the same perch. It's a little bit uh, too thick. I would have preferred if it landed on on something thinner, but um, you know, I like the pose. Looks kind of alert and against the dark background too. Here's a ladder back uh, woodpecker, kind of small. A very similar to our local Nuttles uh, woodpecker in a way. Um, and, uh, and the female also on, on another perch. 
and a super common bird in the in the east and the, in the southwest, the northern cardinal. Um, you know, I kind of uh, was lucky and uh, took it while uh, while it was uh, took this shot while it was taking off. Um, you know, giving the first second uh, wing flap. Uh, and then Dano has a a, a, a couple of uh, roadrunners that live uh, on the property or nearby. And uh, although the wild, they're pretty tame. And uh, so he will go out and uh, call roadie, 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 roadie. And then the, the roadrunner will come in. And he, he has this, this routine uh, where um, he will set up mealworms on, on a couple of uh, sticks, and then the bird will land from one stick to the other, um, uh, you know, looking for the mealworms. Um, and, and then you can use it to catch some, some flight shots. And uh, I was here with my uh, uh, Sony A1 A and the 200 to 600 lens, uh, which uh, I was surprised to blur the background uh, pretty, pretty well, considering that in the nearest uh, in the uh, bushes were all fairly close. So here's another, another take of it uh, in flight. And then uh, get another one. And yeah, one, one last one. I like the, the, the a little bit the, the wings, I mean, the tail spread there. And here's a close up of one of them, maybe the, the female. I couldn't quite tell the difference between the male and the, and the female, but I like also the subtle colors that they have, you know, they're not just uh, brown, but they have a little hint of, uh, of orange and blue on the, on the head. So the next place uh, we, we went to uh, was, uh, it's called the Florida Canyon or, or Box Canyon, I think. I don't know if they're the same, but uh, the, the access uh, road is, is practically the same. Uh, so you go on the way to Madura Canyon and then make a left turn and start going into these canyons. And there's lots of, of birds there that you can, you can find um, along the road. Like the, the first one, which I asked Matthew um, to locate and he, he kind of found, found it on the first day it was a, the Northern Beardless, Beardless Terranulet, uh, which is a, a flag catcher, very small, um, you know, looks uh, different than the other Empyronax flag catchers that you can find like, uh, you know, the Pacific Slope flag catcher that you have here. Um, on the second trip, uh, while we were shooting another bird, this one, Landed so close, you know, kind of um, I could barely focus on it. So this is almost a a, a full frame uh, shot of the of the same species. You can see the plumage. This one is uh, is more worn. You know, it's it was kind of at the end of the breeding season for this species. Another target uh, for us was uh, the the five striped sparrow, which uh, I, I kind of like. You know, it's uh, prettier than your regular local sparrow here, um, and uh, can all be, be found there. Yeah. One of the uh, things about the birds from, from that corner of the country is that uh, they are just kind of a spillover from, from Mexico. I mean, this, these are mostly uh, Mexican species, um, which have their the northernmost range uh, ending in the southern tip of, of Arizona. So you can find a few. And uh, yeah, this one was was there and obliged. It perched on 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 these uh, ocotillos, uh, uh, which were all lifted out. Was uh, was impressive to see so much uh, green, and just uh, that's the result of the of the monsoon rains. And another one posing there, and I took this one just as it was taking off. It was a little bit. Uh, 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 blurry, it didn't have the shutter speed super high, you know, I should have had maybe one five thousandths of a second or so, but I probably had one three thousand. Uh, but I cleaned it up uh, uh, with uh, Topaz and uh, at least uh, from the resized version, it looks uh, fairly okay. Another specialty there, uh, I really wanted to get this, uh, this uh, second trip is the very bunting. Um, a beautiful uh, bunting, you know, love their songs, you know, similar to other buntings. It's interesting to me. They, they all have kind of similar, sim similar patterns for their 
their songs. See, they're, they used to locate. Uh, again, one singing on Ocotillo and, uh, and one last uh, post. Another one uh, that we found there is, you know, you can find it here. It was an actual flat catcher. You can see the plumage is a little bit worn there. So I assume also this bird was uh, ready to leave the area. And uh, also a, a local species is uh, more of a, of a desert uh, warbler, I would say, is a Lucy's warbler. I think it's the smallest uh, warbler in, in North America and uh, kind of cute. Uh, here it was on, on this, uh, on this thorny bush. We also ran into also another species we have around here, the, the black-headed grosbeak, which uh, also posed on a, on a similar uh, bush. Another species that we found uh, in the canyon, the, the, the hooded oriole. Uh, there were also Scots orioles, but uh, I, we couldn't ph photograph any. So as Steve said, you know, I'll probably be back uh, next year uh, looking for that species. Um, interesting, uh, um, the, the ocotillos, the blooms provide, a, 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 you know, a substance for some of these birds. So uh, sometimes it's enough to, um, to, you know, cut one of these uh, a, a sticks with uh, blooms and then they, they'll just go for it. Um, you know, they, uh, I'll show some pictures uh, later uh, in, a, in a different location. And here's uh, the same audio taking off. And uh, we also ran, I was surprised to see a, a, what I think is a Costa salmon bird, um, which uh, I thought uh, was more from, you know, Southern California, but yeah, apparently can be also found uh, around there. So, and the third stop in, in the Green Valley area was uh, Madera Canyon, you know, a place uh, uh, where um, you know lots of birders uh, go, there's lots of cool species. It's a place that's a little bit more difficult to photograph. You know, it's a canyon, so you get lots of shade, and it's uh, uh, hard to get good backgrounds. So lots of trees, and uh, but uh, in past past trips, uh, I was lucky to uh, have access to one property there. Um, I don't think there's access to it anymore. We, uh, you could do setups. It was kind of a secondary place from the under the elephant head. And uh, the, here's another specialty that used to go there for the water, if I remember well, um, the, the Mexican jay. You can hear them usually in flocks, are very noisy birds. Uh, another uh, species used to be called the magnificent uh, hummingbird, and it was split in two. And the one we have in the US now is the Rivolis. Uh, Hummingbird. Um, yeah, I wish I had got more colors uh, from, from it. Uh, this is also from uh, a trip, you know, 10 years ago. It was a little bit less skilled. And, uh, and here is a, a broad bill hummingbird. I really love this hummingbird. Very common, but I love the essence on the, on, on the plumage all, all over. And here's another uh, local. Uh, Hummer, the black chin hummingbird, very, uh, very common there. Uh, as a matter of fact, we saw we saw very few males, but uh, lots of female uh, black chin everywhere. And uh, another specialty, the Arizona woodpecker, uh, the only non-black and white uh, woodpecker, as far as I remember, in in the U.S. This is a, a male. You can tell by the by the red on the on the nape, and and this was going to. A, to the same setup place uh, I mentioned earlier. And then another um, goal was uh, to try to get shots of the elegant trogon, which, um, a, um, you know, it's a beautiful bird. Um, it has a very distinctive call. If I remember well, sound, it sounds like a barking dog. And um, a, unfortunately, it's so difficult to get a clean shot of, of this species. Uh, it's always uh, in the middle of branches with very uh, complicated backgrounds, very busy backgrounds. And uh, so it's usually, I mean, this is kind of the best I could get out in the open, which you can, didn't have all those uh, uh, branches in the front, but yeah, could have done some Photoshop work, I guess, but uh, 
didn't want to do it with these photos. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to go on that one, one more time in the future and, and, uh, and get it. Here's one that's more clean, but it wasn't the shade. So I had to uh, do a little bit of, uh, you know, pushing the shadows and uh, it was against uh, kind of um, a, a lit background. So, uh, but still I like the colors um, that, that I could see, you know, it was, it was taking off um, uh, by the trail. Um, and then last image, uh, the, the draw gun kept going, going in and out of this a hole. We didn't know if it was actually an S hole. It wasn't really clear, but it was nice seeing it, you know, poking the head out uh, from, the, from, the, from the hole for a, for a couple of, uh, of shots. And then at night, uh, you can always also find other birds in the, in the area. Um, uh, you can find the uh, whisker, whiskered gray chow, um, also a, a, a local specialty. Um, you can see all the whiskers uh, there, and uh, and then this one actually was in the in um, Florida Canyon or one of the, or one of those uh, canyons, an elf owl, uh, which was in uh, in the Big Saguaro. They, it's incredible that 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 cactus, you know, the woodpeckers make holes, and then so many species use use them uh, use those cavities for for nesting. And here's another shot. You can see all the, 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 the thorns, you know, and the, and the owl peeking out. And this, I mean, the, these owls are so tiny. I mean, th those owls, I couldn't believe that uh, that the owl could go through them. Um, they were maybe a couple of inches uh, uh, wide, maybe, maybe less. I don't know. They were so so small. So the, our next stop was in, in Tucson. And uh, we mostly visited uh, uh, two parks. Um, one is called uh, Catalina State Park, um, uh, which is uh, in the middle of a desert. Um, you know, lots of uh, uh, of cacti and um, a, a, you know um, thorny bushes and uh, and Mount Lemon, uh, where we went to look for warblers. So this place I wanted to photograph, and this is the best shot I got, but kind of not not the best one i would i wish it had been um kind of more isolated uh but it's a pair of uh, rufus uh wind sparrow they they never really wanted to to go out in the open and, and you know yeah, give, give us a, a clean shot um and this is what i was mentioning you 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 know you may get a, a, a little um stem of a cotillo i mean this you know, th this is such a common plant. Uh, you got a, a, a little branch, and then uh, you know, place it in, in these dry areas, and the and the birds will come to them. You know, I was surprised to see the, in this case, an anas hummingbird going to drink uh, nectar. Um, well, sorry, it, uh, should have included more more of the same after this one. Here's another specialty, Canyon Tohi. Looks uh, very similar compared to our. A California tohi, but it has this black spot on the on the chest, uh, which uh, kind of tells it uh, gives uh, gives it away. And this is a species I really really wanted, uh, not super uh, attractive, but just to have in the collection. Uh, uh, Abert's uh, tohi, a different kind of tohi. It's more common uh, for the north in 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 the Phoenix area, but I didn't have much time to to spend there. So we were lucky to find uh, a, a couple in there in the Catalina State Park. Panapepla is also a, 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 a nice uh, looking bird. And uh, yeah, it's not super common, but yeah, you can find a few at, uh, at these parks. I mean, um, there's not just this park, there's lots of other other parks in the areas. Um, I, the first time I went to a place called Sabino Canyon, uh, which is busier, but uh, I remember getting some some nice shots too. I mean, the lot, there's lots of people. There's, you know, there's more more traffic there. A uh, Lucy's warbler on on a on a mesquite uh, uh, branch. Um, and uh, this is the same I was uh, mentioning um, about the flowers. Uh, you put them out there, and then uh, birds like the, like the Lucy's warbler will go and uh, start uh, eating the 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 buds or. Um, or actually investigating the, 
kind of uh, attracted to this. Um, similar with the with the birding, uh, another local small bird. I really really love these little guys. And this is kind of a shot that I that I liked. Uh, it, you know, when the bird just uh, went all the way up of, uh, of this uh, stem. And then a, another bird that you can find there, uh, probably the, the, the easiest place to find it at around there is a, the vermilion flycatcher. Um, I, I don't have a good photo of this and we didn't have any, any good opportunity in this trip. So I asked uh, Steve if he could lend me one just to, to show, you know, because uh, it's such a beautiful species. Huh? He, he let me have this uh, beautiful image of, uh, of the flight catcher taking off. So uh, moving on, the, the, in the last uh, location that we visited in the, in the area was Mount Lemon. Mount Lemon is kind of a, a very nice area because um, it has a road that starts at, at the a kind of desert level. So you find a, a certain kind of, of species and then you start moving up and, and the species are, are start changing. Um, you know, you have certain types of warblers uh, at mid elevation and then at the highest elevation, you have, uh, let's say, the olive warbler and the other specialties. So we started, um, you know, uh, at the lowest uh, elevation, we found this uh, Bractolus sparrow singing on a, on, on a cactus, uh, pear, I think. And, and then a uh, little bit higher up, we find, uh, you know, when the forest starts, uh, you, we find the Arizona woodpecker. Um, another species of which would have posed a little bit um, better, but uh, yeah, but it's nice. Uh, we found some birds like, you know, Hutton's video, which are uh, fairly common here in the, in the spring. We also found uh, a few, and uh, there this, this guy was uh, checking out some bugs, I think. Uh, Blue grain eye catcher, another common species here that uh, can be found at higher elevations. And uh, black chin hummingbird, uh, female, that uh, was eating bugs around, around where we were standing. A pygmy nuthatch, which is another you know, bird you can find uh, in the Bay Area. Um, and um, painted red start. This is uh, another warbler, one of the you know, beautiful warblers you find uh, out in, in, in Arizona. Um, Another one that uh, was fairly common, much more common than uh, uh, here in, in, in the Bay Area, is a black-throated gray warbler, which I can um, I can find a few here in, at the Santa Cruz uh, Mountains, but uh, but not, not as many as uh, uh, in down at uh, Mount Lemon. And uh, here's a black-throated gray uh, taking off. Another uh, warbler, the Grace's uh, warbler. Um, and uh, here one yeah, kind of picking through a, a hole in the, in the in, in, in between branches, kind of like the, the framing of the, of the shot. And another uh, bird, uh, you know, Junko, uh, kind of more interesting that the, than, than our dark eyed Junko. I really like the, the striking yellow eye of this uh, species. And this one was carrying uh, nesting material when we shot it. And then a, a, one of the nice uh, is warbler species from there, um, the, the red phrase, the, the warbler. We really love this. And this one you can find at the higher elevations uh, at uh, uh, Mount Lemon. And uh, here's one yeah, shortly after it was uh, taking off uh, from a branch here also indeed. I remember well a little bit of uh, a, a Photoshop work to to enhance the sharpness. It was uh, on the, a little bit on the blurry side, but you know, again, resized looks looks okay. And then another a uh, warbler. Um, things this one is in, in its own family now. I forgot what the, the new classification is, but I really like it. Uh, the olive uh, uh, warbler, uh, which is also found. Uh, uh, for the south in, in Mexico, as I, as I understand. And we also found the, a, a female um, 
not the, the shot is not as clean as for the for the male, but you can tell, um, you know, it's uh, it's from the same species. So the last uh, section of the trip was, uh, um, you know, uh, all the way uh, east uh, of uh, um, southern Arizona uh, near the border with uh, New Mexico. As a matter of fact, to, to get there, you have to drive along uh, New, uh, New Mexico along Route 80. And uh, uh, we stayed in, in, uh, in Airbnb in, in, uh, in Rodeo, which is a little bit uh, uh, southeast from here, just, just, just outside of this map. And from there, we would drive to Portal and up uh, Cave Creek, Creek Canyon, and and uh, you know to the to the peak and uh, some some back roads to to find uh, to find birds. So you know I'll start from the area around uh, Route uh, uh, 533, which is called State Line. You know the the divine line between Arizona and uh, and, and New Mexico and uh, yeah, along that that road, uh, you can find thrashers, uh, sparrows, um, a quail. Um, we didn't, we struck we struck out with a quail, but yeah, next time maybe. So, uh, cash and sparrow um, was found uh, in, right along the the state line road. Uh, a little bit further up, uh, we found the uh, uh, Botteris uh, sparrow. Um, yeah, they're kind of drab, but kind of, I like sparrows. I know not everybody likes them. Uh, I was lucky to um, to uh, see the Spendais uh, thrasher as it was uh, moving uh, through the vegetation, and this one was uh, carrying a little a little bug. I think it was going to a nest uh, to uh, feed uh, some young. And um, earlier in the one just before the, the you know in the beginning of the previous uh, trip in the spring i in a place near uh, phoenix i photographed uh, these pieces a little better at the, there's a corner there where a uh, birders uh, spot uh, thrashes in particular in you know beginning of the year february march and, and in, in 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 april like was only able to find these pieces but didn't have it so it was kind of nice a bend thrasher and here's uh, a photo of it Right next to the to the road, and uh, so a little bit further up, uh, we find some of the species that we that uh, we found earlier in the spring. Uh, and but you can see, like this verdant plumage is not quite uh, you know very optimum. I think uh, it's uh, very warm, very late in the season. Uh, uh, there's it's getting a, a bug, I think, or something from from the bush. Uh, black turtle sparrow uh, also love their song of these sparrows and kind of find them sharp looking, you know, with, the, with all that uh, black bib. A blue grosbeak, um, beautiful species. Uh, I'd say it's fairly common. Um, so we we were lucky. This is from a, a, a the trip ten years ago, and this is from from this trip um, um, on juniper, I think. A, a, a shot of the blue grass pig uh, taking off uh, from one from one of the bushes, um, and uh, another one taking taking off from a different uh, bush. I mean, with these new cameras, it's, it's so much fun, you know, just capturing uh, I don't know, 20, 30 frames per second. And uh, if you check some of those, can be pretty pretty nice. Another local specialty that we found the thick billed build, uh, kingbird which was uh, nesting uh, around portal. Um, we did see the nest uh, kind of in the distance and uh, it, we could, couldn't get very good shots as well, not showing them, but they, they had uh, three fledglings about to leave the nest. Um, and then we got this one as it was uh, taking off a couple of times, um, um, like this one here and, uh, and here kind of frontal um, I was able to get a whole, a whole sequence, but it was a little bit uh, late in the day and the rest has, uh, the rest of the shots have lo lots of shadows. And uh, here uh, one, um, you know, landed on the, on a dry agave plant. Another common uh, thrasher there, the long-billed uh, thrasher on the prickly pear. 
and then a pair of them on a, on a dry stick there, but I like the just a, just a position of them, um, you know, looking in both directions. And uh, well, Matthew, um, when he goes there, um, a few days before the workshop, he will uh, set out in one of the camping areas, he will set out in some uh, hummingbird feeders. Um, so the birds, uh, the hummers will start uh, getting used to, to those places, to those feeders. And when you, by the time you get there, uh, you can grab some wildflowers and uh, they will go check them out. So, which is what, uh, what, what uh, happened here. A, a female black chinned uh, hummingbird, a blue throated hummingbird, another, um, you know, uh, pretty hummer, hummingbird, uh, which I would have got more blue on the throat, but, uh, but it's a nice one. Um, and then a broad bill also going to the same, to the same setup. And the last one is a, what well, I think it's a female or a juvenile uh, broad bill hummingbird. I could never uh, figure out what this one was. A also common bird, I like to hear the, all the, 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 the wing and the tail spread, kind of a semi-banking uh, position. Common raven, I was wishing it were a chihuahua raven, but it wasn't, I think, I think just common. Brown flats, aggressive flycatcher, uh, found also at higher elevations when you are in the, in the forest area. Um, Sulfur belly flycatcher, uh, Kind of like the this uh, kind of uh, different type of black catcher, like the sounds that make the sound they sound like a rubber ducky. Kind of a very cute uh, uh, to hear them. Uh, we also saw a lesser goldfinch. Uh, this is the um, Texas or some kind of eastern uh, species, which has uh, way more black on the on the head, so it looks uh, looks a little different compared to our local. Lesser goldfinches in the Bay Area. Uh, and a Mexican chickadee, which is um, larger than, than our uh, local chickadees here, or the black cap, or the mountain chickadee. Um, this one, you can tell also that the plumage is not uh, that, that great. I think it was ready to, to, to leave the, the nest. Another beautiful species that we, do, that we ran into is a, a hepatic uh, tanager. Uh, we found it at, a, at near the top of the of the mountain, um, yeah. and um, here's another view of of the of the tanager. We also found a Cordilleran flycatcher in a couple of uh, places. Uh, this one has uh, a bug in the in the bill, and yeah, again, I wish the the branch was a little thinner. And we're so lucky to to. Uh, to find, uh, I mean, following a report, uh, uh, we found the, the spotted owl. Uh, this is the the Mexican subspecies, which I think has more spots than the the other subspecies. I I, I don't have any other shot of the of the local one here. And there was also a little uh, chick uh, uh, nearby. Kind of very difficult to to photograph them in. Uh, you know, in a clean uh, setting, they're always in the middle of branches and so on, so very difficult. And then the the, the birds were fairly sleepy, even though it was uh, it was late. It was uh, very cloudy, actually starting to rain almost. Uh, so I thought I was hoping they they would have the, the eyes more open. But yeah, you you take what you get. And uh, just before, uh, on the last day actually after the workshop, I I went back. You know, just just before coming back home, I went back to the in, to the canyon and uh, ran into um, a friend uh, who uh, showed me a location of a, a valley crown hummingbird, which is a, is a hummer which we had uh, missed. Uh, so it was going to a feeder that uh, they had placed in the middle of the forest too. So it was kind of nice, and I got also a a, a shot of it uh, in flight as it was pulling back out of the of the feeder and this was very very dark and i think uh, it, you know a few minutes later it started really pouring and that pushed me out of the, of the area through a, a, a monsoon, the, the monsoon rains and uh, that's it um, thank you very much <laughs>